Why at age 82 do I want to hike the Appalachian Trail? Well, I've been asked that and that's really a hard question, but because there's multitudes of reasons. But I can tell you, I would have never attempted the AT if I hadn't have paddled the full length of the Mississippi River from source to sea. I bet I couldn't count the number of times I've heard people say, I hope I can be like you when I'm 81 or 82. It's just, it's just overwhelming to get a joy that you want to get when you learn that you are being, you know, looked at as an icon, an age icon in the field of adventure. We're at Dix Creek Gap and uh, it's cold. It's starting to snow a little bit. Uh, it's going to be down in the 20s. And, well, we have some snow on the top. I can see it from here. I said, matter of fact, about a couple hundred feet vertical up there is a freeze line. And that's, I'm looking at snow over here now. And that's uh, 41 miles from Neal's Gap to here, and that'll, that'll be a challenge. Well, I started officially on 1 January this year, 2017, which means that I have to finish it by 31 December. How long is it going to take me to hike the Appalachian Trail? Well, if I get halfway, I'm going to do it. And I, I think it's probably going to take me about three and a half months, or maybe a week less than that, to get halfway. So we're talking about six and a half or seven months to hike from Georgia to Maine. The 81 year old, uh, which holds the record now for oldest person to ever through hike, the Appalachian Trail, well, he has the advantage of, uh, of having hiked the trail before. And according to everybody that I've talked to, the Conservancy people is, as well as lay people, if you haven't hiked it before, your chances of completing it in old age are really slim, but I'm out to I'm out to make them out rely on that one. I'm gonna try to see if I can't do it. You know, that just challenges me. And of course, everybody knows, I'm sure, what a through hike is in the eyes of the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. And that is, uh, if you complete the trail in a 12 month period, and all of it, doesn't matter what combination you put it in, forward, backwards, or flip-flop, or straight through, if you do it in that 12-month period, in their eyes, it's officially considered a through hike. It's been a hard climb up here, folks. But well, we're close to the top. Just look at that view down through there. It's worth it to see that. How was that last night, Dale? Oh, gosh, it was... I couldn't get out of the sleeping bag. I was, I was cold, but not. I could, I could stand it cold in the sleeping bag, but I could not get out of the sleeping bag from the time we arrived until this, until just a few minutes ago. It was, it's really cold. I mean, it was down. I'm sure low, single digits. Wind chill index. I eat some jerky and uh, an energy bar. And I, I broke the rules. I ate in a tent. I actually ate in a sleeping bag. But I, I, I was to a point where I said, Bear, if you're coming, come on, because I gotta, I'm going to have to eat. I'm warm my hands. I'm going to have to eat in the, in the tent. I just couldn't get out to eat. I just couldn't do it. I had to figure out a way to go to the bathroom in a, in a bottle forward outside best I could but I couldn't get out. What part of trail scares me most? It's not the bears. I think probably the most difficult thing is finding a food that I can stick with that I like that I'm going to eat to keep my weight up to a point where I can have an energy level that keeps me hiking. Well coming down right back off those rocks one foot slipped and I went over into there by that dead tree and this got caught between two rocks as I went in and just broke it right off. Like that. Oh, there's no question. I've, I've heard people say they'd really go uphill and downhill. No way. I love downhill. I get, I, I, but I like better just a slight downhill, almost level. That is ideal. I'm just in. I just enjoy the heck out. I can look out, see things and all. I'm not watching my feet so much. I love downhill. Hey, this is where I'm pitching my tent tonight, right here. I think I'll just take a little nap right here before I put my tent up.
What are we doing today? Well, we're going to do, uh, I guess it's about the last 14 miles. Uh, I don't know how rough the train is, but I know one thing, it seems like it's going to get a little warmer. Right now my hands are a little bit numb, but I'm ready to go. I got my backpack with me, so I don't know if I call that slack packing or not. I'm just ultra, I'm extreme ultra light right now. We're going to have fun today. I can tell you that much more than I have the last two days. Yesterday wasn't too bad though. That first day was like, whoo, that was, that was miserable. That wasn't fun. Today will be fun. I want my finish date to be uh, before it gets cold this fall. <laughs> I don't care when it is, as long as it's, get, it's, it's before that, that cold sets in for the winter. Can I get a photo of you? You got a, you got a cool face, man. Well, I would love to hike straight through to Maine, let Mount Katahdin, but I'm not sure if I'll have the time to do that. I, I, of course, one knows to, to get into the park, uh, uh, in Maine, uh, you have to be there by no later than the end of October, and I I may be running a little late. You know, it's a possibility I can't get there by that date, then, because I don't want to get. If if it snows, they close the park. So uh, I would like to try to get there, and at a time where I can enjoy the mountain and enjoy the hike out. So I just may decide to do what they call a flip-flop, which is perfectly acceptable and encouraged by the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. And I may, when I get to Harper's Ferry, that's where the headquarters is, I may just go to Maine and hike back to, to Harper's Ferry. <coughs> 42 miles in the last three days. That's uh, some pretty rough area too. No hiking tomorrow. Why not? <laughs> Well, you won't guess where I am. I'm at the border of Georgia and North Carolina. See it right there? You're on top of this mountain in uh, North Carolina called Max Patch. Trying to figure out where to go from here. The sign's a little confusing. Just 10 miles to Hot Springs, North Carolina. And life couldn't be better. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe this. I'm the oldest, at least I'm trying to be the oldest person to hike the Appalachian Trail, but it's, this is not about me. This is about the youngest. And right here is the youngest person. <laughs> I can't believe it. We met on the trail. The youngest person to ever, ever hike with her mom and dad the Appalachian Trail, but I'm sure she's going to make it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, her trail name? Is real. Is real. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't, this is wonderful. Thank you. Hey, I'm on top of Unata Mountain here, up from, uh, up from Irwin, very, very top of Rome Mountain. Well, this is Jenny Knob anyway. Is Jenny around? Just standing here, trying to figure out how in the world I'm going to get up there on those wet rocks. 6.15 in the morning on May the 23rd, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, just sitting here in the tent waiting for the rain to stop a little bit. What has changed on the trail since we were together down in Georgia? Well, the weather has changed. One of the big things is it's gotten a little warmer and it's been really, really nice having some warm days. Yeah, I'm getting hot already. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna strip down. I'm gonna start sweating. With me, what has changed is I've gotten much more physically able to handle the physical challenges of the AT. This, this is a very challenging trail, physically. 
I can now hike uh, 15, 18 miles a day without, with comfort, pretty comfort. If I get over 20 though, that's just, that's, that's, uh, that's about my maximum. That's a really good feeling for somebody comes up in 20 feet or 30 feet from you and they say, hi, gray beard, and they have, I've never met them before in my life. That happens quite frequently. It's happened a lot on the trail, it happened a lot here in Damascus at trail days. Hey! How's the overall plan of taking the van along with me working out? Well, I've learned uh, one thing. I want the van ahead of me instead of behind me. When I first started, I would try to get a ride shuttle back or a ride hitchhike back to the van. Now I want to be able to finish with the van in front of me. So I'll take the van up three, four days, even sometimes one day, but uh, no more than a week up in front of me and hike to the van. Oh, I'm always shuttling other hikers around as well. It's just because, you know, when I'm driving by a parking lot and there's some hikers there hitchhiking, I, I gotta stop and pick them up. As a matter of fact, that happens quite frequently. Has anything changed with my flip-flop plan? Well, of course, when, you know, I started hiking in uh, Springer Mountain, I was hoping that I would not have to flip-flop. But uh, at my age, I'm having to take a rest day at least once a week. And it may work out to where I'm going to have to flip-flop when I get to Harper's Ferry. I may have to go on up to Katahdin and hike back down to back down to Harper's Ferry. Now that wouldn't be a bad finish because the family can come up and they couldn't go to Katahdin. It's just too difficult for them to get up there. And, I, and they could, I could hike in there and that would be a very, very good, rewarding experience. I talked with the uh, AT folks too here at the Trail Days in Damascus and they said that they would be happy to have that happen. Let me finish right there and, and set that record right in walking in their door. too hard. I'm going to walk out on the edge, but it might be 20 feet from the edge. <laughs> I'm, I, I see some of these folks like the guy from Memphis, uh, Jason, uh, call him Ghost on the trail. He was out there and I never seen anybody sitting out so far with all his legs and his, four, his force extremities out over in, in the air, sitting there. Oh man, if that had been me, I'd been scared to death. That looks really, really frightening. Hiker hunger, well, you know, surprisingly enough, I'm not too hungry when I'm hiking. I don't eat a lot. But man, when I take a day's rest or zero a day, I eat all the time. And I haven't gained any weight. Matter of fact, I went down for the free medical checkup today at the, here in Damascus at the trail days and my blood pressure was fine and my weight has dropped down to 145. And uh, they gave me a clean bill of health to go ahead and hike. I'm eating like crazy, man. And I don't have to take my cholesterol medicine anymore. It's great. Well, still, I, getting enough calories is difficult. I have to really consciously think about eating foods while I'm hiking on the trail in order to get enough calories to, to, uh, to not just simply burn everything I've got up. I have a little bit left in, in fat, but not very much. Chicken noodle soup before dinner. It's really good. Wow, it's hot in the bottom. That's my main course right here. This is my appetizer, the soup. I got a dessert down there too. And some Spam. Well, I'm thinking about eating that with the macaroni and cheese. Might be good. I've seen a lot of wildlife, but no bears. Bear poo is the only thing I've seen. As far as be staying in shelters and hostels, uh, I haven't stayed in but about three hostels and that's only because of weather. Uh, and basically I've only stayed in a, three or four shelters and that's because of weather. I usually prefer putting my tent up and sleeping in the outdoors. All ready to go to bed. Rain gear, I've tried several different approaches to it. I'm beginning to think that you're going to, if it's raining very hard, you're going to get wet. No matter what rain gear you have. I'm beginning to think that. I did not think that. Like I didn't know the trail was going to be as physically as hard as it is, I'm beginning to think that you cannot stay dry in a hard rain on the Appalachian Trail.
this was worth it coming up here in the rain to see this. Uh, I tell you, even though it's cold, the horses are standing by this tree trying to stay dry, and I, I can't believe how tame they are to be wild horses. I just think, I gotta live like this for seven months. Woo! Hi, Mommy Bear. I'm just gonna pass. That's all I'm gonna do, girl. You're just gonna have to let me pass, okay? Don't eat me. I don't taste good. And your babies are safe. And I'm going on, okay? Bye-bye. Take care. And I haven't reached the halfway point yet, but there it is, right there. As soon as I step over that line, I'm gonna be over halfway through the Appalachian Trail. Yee hee hee! Whee! Right there it is, ladies and gentlemen. See it. Well, up the top of Mount Washington here with Jordan, my son. Mount Adams up there in the background. I'm not gonna go up there because I don't have to. It's not part of the AT. Johnny and I are on our way up to Katahdin. You know, this is the area that most people have trouble with right through here. There's a bunch of bars in the rocks. And, you know, this is not rock scrambling, this is rock climbing. Here's a famous sign right here that everybody gets their picture by. Oh, this is really, really great trail through here. It's just not rocky. It's fantastic walking. This is unusual. Yeah, it's getting a little more difficult. Well, I made it up here on top of Mount Musalak in, uh, in the White Mountains in New Hampshire. Look at that sign. There it is right there. Well, I finally made it on top of Lincoln. Woo! I don't know how I got up here, but I did it. Wonder who is supposed to be maintaining the trail here. Lord have mercy. And here it is. Right here. The border. Well, don't ever let anyone tell you Connecticut is easy. Yeah, this is part of the Appalachian Trail. Getting across the Hudson River. Look at this boardwalk, would you? It just goes for a couple of miles. And I'm gonna leave that note right there. And thank you so much. Southern Pennsylvania, on my way to Boiling Springs. I just came out of there and down the last mountain. Cold Mountain. No more mountains anyway, big ones on the Appalachian Trail for me. Out of probably over a thousand mountains, I just came down the last one. And now we're going out into the fields. Well, this morning what's happening is that uh, I'll be hiking the last mile, and this is most important of all, because actually when I get up to the AT headquarters, I'm declaring that as the, uh, the finish for me. All 2,190 miles will be hiked, and I will have passed by every single white blaze on the entire Appalachian Trail. Thank God, I'll go home now. Yeah. <laughs> but not before I break the ribbon! Hey!